Hi, I'm Robin Rowe, and um, this Gabriel. is Gabrielle Pantera. <laughs> Gabrielle Pantera. <laughs> and we're here today uh, to talk about uh, using OpenAI GPT-2 for drafting technical documents. Give me a second here where I switch over my screen. And here we go. Okay, well, first of all, thank you for the Linux Foundation for having us here today. Uh, we're going to be talking about Complete a Thought uh, AI. This is where we give uh, artificial intelligence a sample of the kind of text output that we would like, and it tries to complete what we're doing. So a little background on us. Uh, here's some past technology projects. Um, I've worked in uh, AR and VR, uh, cameras, uh, traffic control, defense. Uh, I live in, uh, we both live in Hollywood. And so we also uh, do technology behind the movies and uh, cartoon series. So animation software, uh, and then also uh, set top box. So I'm the chairman of uh, ANSI ISO 56007. This is a future world standard for innovation idea management best practices. Here are the countries that are involved. It's, it's most of the world. And I'm going to back up for just a second. Why am I going to back up, Gabrielle? Because he wants to talk about AI speech recognition starting in 1996. Okay, so the reason I'm going back in history here is that a lot of people find uh, AI very confusing. It's, it's hard to understand how it works. And in fact, nobody really understands how AI works because it has so much hidden complexity. But I founded the research lab at a defense company long ago, and we used hidden Markov models, which was an early uh, version of what we have today. And it's a little bit easier to understand. So I'm going to quickly go through this. Uh, or actually, Gabrielle will. OK. Uh, well, first, it deduces hidden states and um, uses path probabilities. So the hidden states, in this case, are rainy and sunny. Right. We, we know whether our people are walking, shopping, or cleaning, but we don't know what the weather is. And we're trying to deduce that using HMMs. And then they use, um, uh, predicts the next syllable. Syllable? Yeah, the next syllable. syllable. <laughs> so, they, so they can predict each syllable and then each word of uh, what is being said. So then it outputs SR text. Yeah, that's the speech recognition text. And it's a precursor to the current AI that we have now. Yeah, and that is? GPT-2. Two. Two, yeah. Complete a thought AI. Okay, so we now kind of understand how AI works. Here's the process. So um, all the experts are volunteers. So it's really hard to find a time to get people together and, and do all this stuff. Our document has to be about 50 pages in length. And so there's a process. We break it into sections and assign to writers different areas for them to take over. Uh, blank page means writer's block, which means you don't know what to write. So you try to get help from other people. Um, you can solo draft sections uh, and they become L-O-R. That's Lord of the Rings. My precious. <laughs> yes, we have, you know, it, it's, it, it's very difficult to draft for a blank page with a group. So typically what happens is one person ends up doing the first draft and then we get into this thing of they don't want it changed. changed. It's my precious. <laughs> so they get, don't want to change. You never get like that, do you? <laughs> I think everyone does. All right, so pressing on. So, and then we have problems of cohesion, style, repetition, bias, skew, all kinds of stuff because we've got dozens of people writing different sections of this document and it becomes sort of a stew. Right. So, later through many drafts, years and years later, we have a standard. Yay! Right? Yeah, five years later. Ugh. Here's how we do it with GPT-2. We draw a mind map first, which is FreeMind. Yeah, we, FreeMind is an open source program for doing mind maps, but there are a dozen different programs to do mind maps. And I'll show you a mind map in uh, just a minute. We create table of content from Map or LibreOffice. Well, we do that in LibreOffice. Well, in LibreOffice. The table of contents has sections, and each section has topics. 
write one intro paragraph per topic as text files. And then we have to go get GPT-2, but don't get just any GPT-2. Get my fork of GPT-2 because I'm maintaining it. The, the version that is the one that OpenAI posted, they've gone into GPT-3 and they seem to have forgotten about it. So they're not updating. Yeah. And uh, put our text intro files, one per topic, in a folder. And then you edit example bash script to yeah. point our, to our data. Which I'll show you in just a minute. And then you run bash script for GPT-2 to complete each topic. Yeah, and then uh, go for coffee or go for lunch, depending on how long your document is. It's, it's pretty fast, but it just sits there and chews. It doesn't really do anything exciting to show you on screen. So here's uh, the concept of a mind map. I'm just going to go over this in about a second here. And the this thing in the center that, that we're looking at, uh, that is what I call a Big Hero 6 diagram, if you're familiar with the movie. Uh, this is uh, has a head and two arms and two feet. And this is just a way of thinking of a table of contents as being five uh, basic things. And behind it is the actual mind map, and I'll show you that in just a moment. So here's Hello World. This is uh, what we gave uh, GPT-2 just to make sure that we had it working. So uh, I took Mary had a little lamb, its fleece is white as snow, and, and you, we get the output of... She hated snow. She hated snow. She hated snow. How does GPT-2 know that? <laughs> <laughs> Charles was reportedly so terrified during the incident that he ran to his girlfriend and began weeping. Yeah, we're not going to read the whole thing to you, but you get the idea here. It's written something very bizarre, but it's written something. It's written something, this, and this it's written a number of lines. This, this out, and, and we've specified in the settings how long it'll, it'll write until you tell it to stop. So we've, we've said how much we wanted, and, and here it is. Okay, so we're going to uh, exit that, and we're going to call up our script. How are we doing on time, Gabrielle? Uh, we're at a little over seven minutes. Okay, so we're halfway here. So here's our bash script. I wrote this script. It, it has a number of variables at the top, uh, which are things that we set. The, the main thing that we care about here is the model name. These are the standard models that come with GPT-2. They're humongous. And we can also create our own models. So we've got the 124 meg model here. And these are the corpus of documents that have been ground up and made into sausage that GPT-2 goes through and uses to decide what to write. Then uh, the num number of samples, uh, I'm going to have GPT-2 take 12 tries at, at writing something. Uh, each try uh, has some random to it, so I get 12 different tries instead of doing one long try. And you'll see why in just a second. Uh, this top K, don't worry about that. The length is how long, uh, you know, I'm going to do 300 characters here. Uh, the temperature is how random the thing is. The, the, the higher the temperature, the less random it is. Uh, here's my Python script I'm going to call. This thing is mostly in Python. Uh, and then, uh, uh, this is the extension that I wanted to write on the name of my file. Then we come down here, and this is just a bash for loop that is going through and chewing on each of those files that we put in our input folder and writing a new file to the output folder that includes, uh, that, that concatenates what we wrote with whatever GP2 wants to write. Okay, so what does that look like? Now we're getting to the good stuff. So here's a human input. Uh, this was written. Uh, by uh, one of our experts, probably me in this case, but maybe not. Uh, and uh, it says this is the people section, and we're going to talk about culture. So organizational culture is a set of shared attitudes, blah, 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 blah. And then we come down here. So here's what GPT-2 thinks we want to write next. So sample number one. Sample number one is culture. This, this word has two meanings. It refers to the culture of people and the organization e.g. culture of the company, and is a set of cultural experiences that help guide actions and decisions by employees. Keep going? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the word can also refer to the culture of persons in an organization. Cultures are a set of shared values, attitudes, and beliefs that enable individuals to participate in and contribute to the organization. Okay, They're so we'll, we'll stop there. You'll notice that at the end of sample one, it says cultures have different Okay, different what? Well, I told it to cut off at, at this many characters, so it cut off right in the middle of a sentence. Now, in the samples below, I've gone ahead and finished the sentence because I can 
I can anticipate where it's going. But I just wanted to show you that this is a, a feature that it doesn't know to cut off at the end of a sentence, although we could program it to do that. It's just cutting off at whatever word it is, and that's fine. So here's sample two, read a sentence of that. Uh, cultural competence is the ability to recognize, understand, and influence others. Okay, and then three? Three is, it is important to understand the roles that culture plays in a business, its objectives, and its business purposes. Culture is an important aspect of organizational development. The organization is what it is. What it is. This is the one I love. How does GPT-2 know this? The organization is what it is. I mean, this is like really vibing now. You know, we're, we're getting like kind of new agey. It is. Well, I was going to read the next sentence. It is what it is to be defined by its culture, by what it is to be defined by its members. Mm. It is getting a little bit uh, new agey there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Very zen. Six is the culture of an organization also informs the way members respond to their circumstances in the world. This looks like it went back. Yeah, um, it, it often does this because remember we're doing random. Right. So it doesn't remember that it's already done something here and it could hit something that is essentially the same. Right. Uh, one important aspect of cultural organization is the belief in shared values and norms. Sorry, we're checking. Oh, yep. Oh we're, no. We're coming up on our time here. Yep. Uh, there's eight, uh, cultural change is made by changing values and attitudes to conform to values and attitudes that are more appropriate in a new environment. Uh, the key to understanding organizational culture is that it has a deep and per pervasive, pervasive, yeah, pervasive, pardon me, That's effect everywhere. on people who participate in it. Uh, the cultural component of an organizational culture is very important. Yeah, that's kind of lame. That's kind of lame. <laughs> that one just kind of repeats itself. Okay. Yeah. And so here, here you see that, you know, sometimes it's better than others. Uh, let's see, 11 and that's, is. And that's why we're doing 12 samples, because some of these are going to be lame and we may just delete them. Right. For example, the value of a team culture is the workplace, in the workplace may be defined as the organization's attitude towards teams and the individuals who are associated with them. That sounds like double talk, but okay. Yeah, it does a lot of double talk yeah. because it doesn't actually know what it's saying. It's using probability, like we talked about on the slide, to predict what the next word should be, but it doesn't actually understand anything that it's saying. And number 12 is the culture can be understood not as a behavior of individuals, but as a collection of experiences of value. That, that's a collective, like the I'm board. sorry, as a collective. <laughs> as a, as a board I was, collective. I was looking ahead, I'm sorry, but as a collective experience of values, beliefs, methods, and tools. Yeah, so, so basically uh, in management, uh, people culture is a board collective. So okay. that's very logical from gbt 2s standpoint. That yeah, they that's as the board collective. At 12. And so that's it. We're out of we're out of time. Uh, we hope that you've enjoyed GPT-2. Uh, go to uh, GitHub to Robin Row uh, GPT-2 if you want to download and play with this. Uh, it should run on just about any operating system. It is extremely tweaky to get GPT-2 to run. Uh, just make sure that you follow the instructions there because I've walked through everything we need to do to make it actually work. Have fun with it. Bye. Bye. Thank you.